Hi, my name is Stuart Halloway, and in this screencast, I will demonstrate some of the leverage you can get from Closure Spec. Closure Specs are structural and predicative descriptions of data. And because they describe data, they also describe functions, which take data and return data, and macros likewise. Writing a spec is a one-time investment that repays you many times over. Given a spec, you can perform simple Boolean validation, making sure that data conforms to spec. Or you can perform a conform operation, which picks apart the syntax of the spec, destructuring it and showing you exactly how the data conforms to the spec. When data does not match a spec, you can get a detailed and precise error message showing you where the problem or problems are. Specs are composable, which means that you can make larger specs out of smaller specs without compromising on the precision of conformance and error report. Given a spec, you can generate uh, random example data that conforms to the spec. And you can also use assertions that assert that data conforms to spec and then turn these assertions off in production. When you spec a function, you get enhanced documentation for that function. And the spec library writes your tests for you so that you can, having written a spec for a function, get hundreds or thousands or millions of generated tests. Finally, spec allows you to instrument functions to verify that they're being called correctly in your program. Let's take a look at all these things working from a Clojure REPL. In the top panel, I'll be showing you Clojure forms, and in the bottom panel, the result of evaluating those forms. First, we'll load necessary libraries, Clojure.spec itself, aliased as S, and Clojure.spec.test for test time tools, alias as test. Next, we'll introduce an example function that we will revisit again and again. This function is called myIndexOf, and it takes two arguments, a source and a search, both strings, and it returns the index at which the search string appears in the source. So I'll show an example invocation of this, looking for the string b inside the string foobar. That returns three. And then I'll show using closures apply. Closures apply takes a function and then takes its arguments as a sequential collection and applies the function to that collection of arguments. This is important because when you think about it, any function invocation can be described this way, regardless of the number of arguments it has or whether the function supports different arities. Considering it this way, you can then write a spec for an argument list using a regular expression, not a regular expression of characters, as you might be familiar with, but a regular expression of arguments. So here's what that might look like in spec. So the def form in spec defines a named spec. Here I'm going to call it index of args, qualified in the current namespace. And this is a regular expression that describes the arg list as it might be passed to a closure function via apply. So cat is a catenation. So this gives us um, one or more things. Uh, the first thing here is a source. Uh, this is a name that I've created, which has to match the string specification. And then a second element, which is I'm going to name search, and has to also be a string. So I've evaluated that and created the user index of arg spec. Now, having created the spec, we can check the validity of some possible argument lists that might be passed to my index of. So two strings are required. Here I'm going to do a valid check, which takes a spec and a valid argument list with foo and the string f. And we'll get back true. And then I'll do a validity check of an invalid argument list that has a foo, a string followed by the number three, and get back false. Validation is nice when you want the most inexpensive form of test and don't need to get more information about the structure of the data or the location of a problem. When you want more information about how data matches a spec, you can call conform. Conform takes a spec and data and returns the possibly destructured uh, value of that data. So here, we're going to conform index of args on the string foo and the string f, which is valid. And conform 
will return data that is labeled uh, per the names used in spec. So here, the idea that foo is the source term and f is the search term is implicit in the ordered syntax, whereas in the conformed value, you'll see that those things are named as we name them in the spec. So the source is foo and the search is f. Unform reverses conform. It takes a spec and a value and returns a value that conforms to that value. When data fails to conform to spec, explain can tell you precisely why. Explain takes the spec and data and prints to standard out an English error message telling you where the problems are. So here we tried foo and the number three, which is not a string, and explain tells us that at position one, remember we're zero based, position one, the value three, fails the user index of args spec at its search component because the predicate string uh, returned false. Explain stir is similar to explain, except it is functional. So instead of writing to standard out, it just returns the string value. And you can start with explain data, which returns a data structure and Englishify it as you see fit. So there we see explain data actually gives you data structure with the path in the spec, the predicate that failed, the value that failed, the spec that failed, and the uh, path into the data itself. Specs are composable. You can make larger specs out of smaller specs. Here, the every form from spec takes a spec and makes a collection spec that mandates every member of the collection must conform to index of args. Notice also that I'm no longer assigning a name to this spec with sdef. I'm just using it anonymously. Specs are fully first class. So here we'll call explain on our new spec and a collection, which might or might not be valid. It turns out not valid. And the precision of this error message is terrific. As we've composed this, we don't have to do any work to get precise error messages reaching down into data. So here at position two, 0, 1, 2, at position 1, 0, 1, the value 42 is the problem. It fails the user index of arg spec because it is supposed to be a search whose predicate is string, and again, 42 is not a string. Specs can be used to generate example data. The exercise form takes a spec and returns a collection of randomly generated values where each value is represented as a tuple the first element of the tuple being the value and the second element being the conformed value. So here we can see uh, a tuple. First element is a randomly generated argument list for my index of a very simple one, empty string, empty string. And then the second element of the tuple is the conformed value showing that source and search and then several more generated values. Exercise is useful for testing. It's useful when you're developing your own specs to verify for yourself that your specs cover the appropriate domain. It's also useful when you're trying to understand specs written by others. Spec includes an assertion mechanism, which I'll turn on now with check asserts true. The assert form takes a spec and data and always returns the data. In addition, when check asserts is on, it validates the data against the spec, throwing an exception if the data fails to validate. Foo and F are a valid index of args, foo and the number 42 in a vector are not a valid index of args. And we'll see in that second case that when assertions are on, you get a detailed error just as we've seen before with spec. Assertions have no runtime footprint when they're disabled. Now let's look at something much more substantial, specking an entire function. The fdef form takes the name of a function and allows you to specify three things, the arguments to the function, the return of the function, and the semantics of invoking the function. Let's take each in turn. The args we've already seen. It's a regular expression specifying the catenation of a source string and a search string. The return is simply a closure predicate, which can be a spec, a natural int, which says that this has to be an integer, zero or larger. The fun spec is by far the most interesting of the three, as it allows you to specify the semantics of a function. That is the relationship between its return value and its args. Here we have an anonymous function that says that the return value must be less than or equal to 
the args source elements size count. So in other words, the return value of the function uh, can't be any larger than the size of the source collection passed in. Even in this very simple spec, you can already see five examples of ways that specification is more expressive than Java's type system. First, these arguments, because they are strings, have to be non-nil. Second, this natural integer has to be positive or zero. It can't be a negative number. Third, this argument spec allows the ability to specify different arities or different positional overloads all in one place, rather than having to spread that information out across a variety of different type signatures. Fourth, the function spec is categorically more powerful than anything you can do in Java's type system, because this allows you to express predicates about the semantics of the function, that is, the relationship between the arguments and the return value. Fifth, and finally, all three of these, and in fact anything in spec, can be written in arbitrary closure. So while spec provides a lot of built-in tools, like regular expressions like cat and predicates like natural int, it also provides the closure language. So unlike a type system like Java's that's closed for extension, you can extend this in arbitrary ways by writing your own closure programs, as we have here with this tiny closure program that verifies that the return uh, is sized to match the collection passed in. Once we evaluate this FDEF, there are three things that we can get back from spec. The first thing is enhanced documentation. So we'll take a look at the doc string for my index of and see that you get closure's normal documentation plus a spec addendum that shows callers of the function what arguments they would need to pass in and what they can expect this function to return and do. Second, you can automatically test the function. Test check takes, in this case, the name of a function and generates, using the generation capabilities of spec, valid arguments to the function. It then calls the function multiple times with different valid arguments, checking that the return value is in fact a natural int, and checking the function spec to verify the semantics of the function. We'll pass this to summarize results which produces suitable output to consume here at the REPL. And we'll see that even in this simple example, that the automatic testing have already found a corner case that we failed to consider. So the failure result has in it the spec of the failure, the name of the function that failed, and then a precise path to what went wrong. So here you have the return value did not conform. It was supposed to be a natural int, but actually the value was nil. And if we think about this for a moment, we'll realize that when we spec'd out this function and implemented it, we never considered what happens in a non-matching case. So what should be returned uh, when the search term is not present in the source string? And so we would need to go back and either enhance this spec or enhance this program. The third thing you get is instrumentation. So instrumentation allows you to verify that functions are being called correctly. Contrast this with check which verifies that functions are implemented correctly. Here we're going to instrument a function. This replaces the function with a shim that first checks the arguments against spec and then calls the original function. Having instrumented my index of, we can make an invalid call and get back a precise error message telling us what went wrong. Again, the stringified error message that spec can produce and the data. Also, a key telling us that the failure was in an instrumented function and another key telling us the exact file, line number, and variable scope in which this happened. This is particularly valuable uh, in larger scenarios where you've chosen to instrument a multitude of functions across an entire project. This will take you precisely to the point at which an invalid call is being made rather than potentially hunting through stack traces uh, across a bunch of code with which you are unfamiliar. So where are we? Spec allows you to make a minimal effort to specify functions and macros and get back a ton of leverage from that effort. You can validate data. You can destructure data to interpret syntax. You can get back error messages telling you precisely where data goes wrong. 
you can compose arbitrarily complex specs without losing the benefits of conformance into structuring. You can generate example data. You can add assertions sprinkled liberally through your program with no runtime cost. You get documentation for free. Spec writes your tests for you. And you can instrument your program to make sure that your use of other functions is correct. If this kind of power seems interesting to you, you can learn more about spec at SPEC's homepage, closure.org about SPEC. My name is Stuart Halloway, and I want to end by thanking the hundreds of contributors around the world who helped to make Clojure better. This screencast is a production of Cognitect, Inc. Cognitect are the stewards of Clojure, and we provide consulting services around it and a host of other technologies to businesses ranging from the smallest startups to the Fortune 50. You can find us on the web at Cognitect.com and on Twitter at Cognitect.